Hi, Nadia. This is Allison calling. Oh, I'm. it's not Nadia. I'm just sitting at her desk. I can forward you to her. Okay, sure. Thanks. Hold on one second. Okay, what number are you at? Okay, okay I'm going to transfer you if I lose you. She's at 5216266. Okay, sure. Okay. Hold on one second. Natasha, turns out a key emergency room staff member wasn't there. Hi, Allison. Hi, speaking. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let me find out why I cannot hear you. Uh, maybe I can. Yes, to... I got it. You got <laughs> it was it? a button on my phone that I had to press. Okay, I'm just going to get this set up for a record. Okay. Okay, and the levels look good. So I'm just going to get you to tell me your first and last name and uh, what we should title you as. Um, my first and last name, Allison Tiemann. That's T-I-E-M-A-N, A-L-I-S-O-N. And my title, I'm not sure what you're, what you're wanting. Uh, the title, like what, what would I refer to you in the in the article in the in the interview if I was to quote you? Well. Um, uh, right now, I'm I, I have the uh, title of the senior editor at Voice for Men. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And um, okay, um, so I, I'm guessing you know about this uh, the campaign, the postering campaign. Don't be that girl. Um, and a Voice for Men uh, does support it. So I, I'm just wondering what you think um, well, of the the fact that this campaign is now spreading. Well, uh, first of all, I I I'm also in, I also talk to men's rights Edmonton who were the originators of that campaign like I'm a part of their group uh so it's it's not just a voice for men that I know like I'm, I'm I've worked with I've also worked with men's rights Edmonton okay and which is the group that is uh, I know who's come down to Calgary to put up the posters well no they uh they're they they came down to Calgary to meet with a group that is formed men's rights Calgary okay men's rights Edmonton wrote to me and they said that they went out postering with their friends at um, Men's yeah, Rights yeah. Calgary as well. So uh, the, the two groups kind of, um, you know, that they came down to to start up one group and uh, to, to help, to help them out, to help them start. Yes. But uh, so that's sort of what, so I'm also involved with Men's Rights Edmonton. So, but in, in that context, I, we don't really have titles, so. Okay, so in, in which capacity then are you speaking to me? In? Well, um... Really, I guess I would be speaking to you in the capacity of, uh, I guess, senior editor at A Voice for Men, but also somebody who's involved in some of the activities at Men's Rights Edmonton. Okay. Um, so in your capacity um, with A Voice for Men, what's your take on the poster campaign moving to Calgary? Well, uh, A Voice for Men's position on it is that it's a good thing to see it see it popping up in other places to see other people who are interested in this message. Um, the message itself is just pointing out the, the targeting of the original ad campaign, which was don't be that guy towards men in general. So that's that we like to see that kind of dialogue being opened up about how the original campaign was targeting men. And why do you think it's a, you said it's a good thing to see it spreading? Why do you think it's a good thing? Because I think it opens up that dialogue. It opens up people actually talking about the original campaign and what it was saying. And it opens up the, the, the questions about why target men. Um, if this campaign, if the don't be that girl campaign is somehow bad, then why wasn't the original campaign, which I believe was government funded bad. So that to open up that dialogue is essentially exactly what we want. We want to be able to talk about these issues. Um, and looking at, you know, the, I mean, the campaign started in Edmonton and now it's moved to Calgary. Why is this really kind of launching in Alberta? Why this province? Um, Alberta? Hmm. Oh, well, first of all, you're, 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 you're far more populous than Saskatchewan. <laughs> so there, there's probably that element to it, that there's just more people in Alberta. Um, and, uh, <sighs> I think maybe there is is may, maybe more uh, acceptance of of an alternative point of view, um, an alternative to the conventional gender theory point of view. So maybe I, you know I couldn't I couldn't give you a definitive answer why Alberta. Uh, I know that in in Saskatoon um, and in Regina there have been posters since last year. So well. 
in Regina, there have been posters been posters put up last year, and in Saskatoon, they've been going up since May. So, I wouldn't say that it's just Alberta; it's also Saskatchewan. And there were posters put up in Vancouver last year. And also posters have been going up in Hamilton, Ontario. So it's I think it's across Canada. It's just for some reason in Alberta it got seen. Is there a men's rights, a men's rights movement afoot in the country right now? Well, I think that there's a increasing pushback to the, you know, sort of the party line in regards to gender. I think that there's a desire to see the other the other side being heard. I know that when Men's Rights Edmonton put on their original Don't Be That Girl campaign and it got all that wave of, of media attention, they got, they got inundated with emails of support from people who are just tired of these campaigns that target men. And uh, they, they got emails from people who wanted to start their own campaigns that were similar. And they got emails from, from people who just wanted to say, hi, that was great work. And I remember um, Karen, she, uh, Karen Strawn, uh, girl writes what? Um, I don't know if you've heard her name. Yes. Yeah. She uh, she told me um, that in that for an unrelated incident, they ended up uh, go, going into a uh, a police police station, and a beat cop, uh, a female beat cop, uh, approached her and said that she loved the "Don't Be That Girl" campaign. So it, there is support. There is support out there from the general community for this, which is why people are coming forward to do their own campaigns. Uh, and there are also some people who've been uh, offended by the posters. Uh, here in Calgary, we know that they've been torn down uh, on some of the uh, off of some of the posts that they were put up on. Uh, what's your reaction to the fact that they were torn down? Um, well, they're torn down pretty much everywhere that they're put up, and I mean in Vancouver. Um, Doesn't that say something though? If they're being torn down. Well, it says that somebody opposes the idea, yeah, but it doesn't, I don't think it says that necessarily anything against, a, like, I, the reality is that if your ideas can't stand up, if you have to pull down somebody else's poster instead of putting your own poster up, um, I think that says something more about your ideas than the ideas that you're pulling down. Because if they put posters up, in fact, the people who are putting posters up that I've been contacted with, uh, when they see their posters being torn down, they say, well, why don't they just put their own posters up beside it? And then we can discuss it. We can, I don't know, have a have a, a poster battle, but whatever, not this pulling it down, not the defacing. Put your own ideas out there. Uh, for, uh, you know, one woman who uh, contacted us and, and who tore the posters down, she said that she found them offensive. Um, can you see why some people would find these posters offensive? Well, my problem is that the, if these posters are offensive, why aren't the originals offensive? Why are the originals offensive, in your opinion? Well, for exactly the same reason that these posters are offensive. If, they are, if you are to see them as offensive... They target a specific group of people for what is a non-gendered social ill. For example, false accusations, there's not just, it's not just a problem with women making false accusations of rape. There's also a problem of men engaging in vigilante justice against people who have been falsely accused of rape. So in reality, the false accusation problem is not gendered. Again, the rape problem is not gendered. It's not a situation where it's appropriate to gender the perpetrators. So in both cases... They are offensive for the same reason. So the idea is to open the dialogue about why one is acceptable and one isn't. Are we going to see this campaign maybe in other forms or the same posters um, in other cities across Western Canada, Eastern Canada, or the rest of the country, really? I think, uh, I think that from what I can tell, yes, there is going to be more of these posters being put up more of different kinds of posters being put up because this this uh the don't be that girl campaign is just the one that got noticed there have been <clears throat> excuse me there have been others that have have occurred that didn't get any any recognition for example i did a, a poster design that simply asked do you have compassion for men and that was put up in regina and in saskatoon i don't think it was put up in alberta but it never got any much media attention that's also been torn down and defaced in fact it's been torn down and defaced with um some pretty pretty uh pretty vile stuff actually and it's simply a poster that says do you have compassion for men 
do you? With a, a picture of a man who's in obvious distress. And what's offensive about that? Why does that need to be torn down or defa defaced? Okay. Thanks so much for this, Allison. I'm just going to stop recording. Uh, that's the end of the interview, but I just have a few more questions. Just give me one moment while I record, while I save this.